Hey everybody, this is Chris. And this is Julia, and this is episode number 42 of the Mixology Talk podcast. Yeehaw! I, cannot, I don't know why I did that, I just felt like I needed I to. I have no words. <laughs> so I recently asked some friends what they would like to know about cocktails. And someone said, cocktails with three ingredients or less. Well, that just sounded too easy to me. So today we're taking their request to an entirely new level, and we're talking about great cocktails that you can make with just two ingredients. And by the way, we're going to exclude your typical two-part drinks that kind of make their round over at college parties, so I'm not going to call out anybody in the room, but somebody really enjoys rum and Cokes. Excuse me? College territory, just saying. Delicious territory. <laughs> don't hate. I know. I just hate the fact that I don't have one in front of me because they're so good. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the traditional vodka cranberry, you know, those are pretty easy drinks. They're probably not even, yeah, everybody's already heard of them, so. Uh, But on this episode, we're going to be talking about really great drinks that aren't served in red plastic cups. But you know, we're not going to tell you what to do. Like, you can use whatever glassware or plasticware that you have. Yeah. We don't judge. We do judge. We do. That's what we do. So (laughs) most two ingredient cocktails are one part spirit and one part sweetener. And I don't mean that in terms of proportion. I mean... There's spirit and sweetener in the recipe. That's pretty much the makeup of it. Right. In some form or another. And so we may as well go in somewhat chronological order and start with the oldest. The first one that comes to my mind is kind of a really old classic old man cocktail, and that's the rusty nail. So I would argue, I, I know you call it an old man cocktail, but it's only an old man cocktail because these old men started drinking it when they were in college. Yeah, it's true. I, I guess you have a point there, for sure. So the rusty nail, we actually mentioned this during our history of cocktail ingredients episode a couple, two weeks or so back, mm-hmm. in the history of Drambuie. And apparently, Drambuie gained much of its popularity in the United States because it was the only thing that could make the moonshine palatable. Ah, and that's why people love it. Exactly. So it's like the original college chaser. <laughs> like a speakeasy that's chaser. Like, yeah, that's like way back. In way like, back yeah. before there were plastic cups. So for anybody that hasn't had a rusty nail, I highly recommend it. It's a great cocktail. It really is. And all it is is scotch and Drambuie. Couldn't That's be it. simpler. Two things. And the beautiful thing about the, the rusty nail is as the ice melts, it gets a, a different balance to it. So it's really cool to, to see it evolve because when the first couple sips are kind of hot, but as the ice melts, adds a little bit more water to it and kind of cuts down the proof a little bit, it becomes a different cocktail and it kind of changes over a little bit of time. It's a cool, cool Almost cocktail. Almost as if the nail were rusting. Yeah. One of my old regulars <laughs> love this cocktail. Kind of brought it back to the front of my mind. So. Yeah. It's a, it's a good one to, to have, and yeah, definitely recommend the Rusty Nail. So another one that I would consider a true classic is called the Horse's Neck, and this is made with brandy and ginger ale, and I'm kind of cheating here because <laughs> some recipes call for Angostura, but when you look into it, Angostura is optional, so I'm sticking my neck out here, my Horse's Neck. Oh, oh no. <laughs> and I'm terrible. calling it. I know, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> But the the name of this cocktail comes from the shape of the garnish. So you'll take a very wide strip of lemon rind and use that as the garnish. And it kind of curls over the glass and looks a little bit like a horse's neck. That's yeah, the I'm story. Gonna the, uh, I'm going to give you the two-part drink on this one for sure. Now, here is another one of my favorite drinks. And this really showcases fresh ingredients. When you get a really great grapefruit um, and mix it with either vodka or gin, you have a fantastic Greyhound. And this on a hot summer day is amazing. It's really, really a good cocktail. I usually go with a, a sweeter form of uh, grapefruit, like a Ruby Red or a Texas Sweet. It really is fantastic. Yeah, I think there's definitely just so much to be said for really great fruit. Another option, another two part cocktail that the Greyhound reminded me of is actually the Paloma. All you have to do is swap the grapefruit juice for grapefruit soda and the vodka or gin with tequila, and that's a Paloma. Ah, another great drink. Another great one, exactly. Now, this next one kind of brings up a lot of bad memories for me. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. This next one, I really debated whether it was it was red cup territory or not. <laughs> you're, I think you're bordering on it for sure. I'm getting close. Yeah, so the cocktail that we're, we're talking about or the drink we're talking about is the Black Russian. It's vodka and coffee liqueur. Yeah, but 
this brings up a really good point that there are a lot of fantastic coffee liqueurs out there on the market right now. There are more options than just Kahlua. The giant K uh, brand out there. The big K. The big (laughs) special K. Oh, no. (laughs) But they do have a good product as well. But there are a lot of fantastic coffee liqueurs out there on the market right now. And if you're crafty and you want to start to make this stuff yourself... This is a really great way to make a fantastic coffee liqueur by doing it yourself. Are you telling me that it's possible to make a coffee liqueur and we haven't tried it yet? Haven't made it yet. I know. Holy cow. I know. I'm I'm a, a little bit embarrassed. This is happening. Yeah, it's going to happen for sure. But I will say a Black Russian is a great cocktail to feature a good high quality coffee liqueur because it is just a two ingredient cocktail. You've got vodka and coffee liqueur with a good quality vodka and a good quality coffee liqueur. You're in trouble. That could be a really fantastic drink. Yeah, there's not much for that coffee liqueur to hide behind if you're using vodka. Exactly. So, you know, make sure you have a good one there. Exactly. And of course, obviously, you can add cream, make it a white russian but i didn't say that because this is a two ingredient podcast right. mm-hmm. you didn't hear me <laughs> didn't hear it so the next one is one of my favorites absolute rum and coke. favorites we already covered that hey <laughs> close rum and ginger beer uh rum was in there that's for it's sure. true it's true now i struggle with this one a little bit because it feels a little bit like a college cocktail but i am gonna go ahead and stick my neck out here and say that you cannot make a real dark and stormy with ginger ale that being said I don't know too many college students who make cocktails with ginger beer, and I'm saying this is a great cocktail. Yeah, I, this one is a fantastic cocktail for sure. And I usually put a little bit of lime juice in there too to kind mm-hmm. of spruce it up a little bit. But then. But I double checked. I double checked. A dark and stormy is rum and ginger beer, and then often you'll put a lime wedge on the edge, mm-hmm. but you don't put the lime juice in the cocktail. Yeah, I'm going to give this one to uh-huh, you. Yeah, uh-huh. uh, usually I put about a half an ounce of uh, lime juice in there just to. Like I said, brighten it up a little bit, yeah. but definitely not needed. It's a great cocktail on its own. And I'm not going to lie, Chris, you make a mean dark and stormy, but if you don't have that lime juice, you can still make a good one. It is, yeah. And the key is definitely a good, good ginger beer for sure. So last but not least, we're going to go for a broad sweep here and say sparkling wine or non-sparkling wine for that matter, plus just about anything, will give you a bellini or a mimosa or some version thereof. Yeah. You know, there it's... Couldn't be simpler... Really simple, great brunch cocktail, and I'm sure we consume millions of them every weekend. Personally? I hope not. <laughs> but it, it's infinitely flexible and just nice, it's easy a great way classic. to enjoy breakfast. Well, and really I think nice. it's just a, a really nice way to enjoy a glass of wine, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nothing wrong with sparkling wine, that's for sure. And you don't no, have I to go it. through the trouble of shaking and all that stuff. You just pour a glass of wine, pour a little bit of love in there, you're Good in to business. Go. Yep, Absolutely. So last but not least is one that I thought Chris made up, but it turns out he'd just been seeing it making its rounds in San Francisco. Yeah, I wish I could take uh, credit for this one, but uh, one of my regulars actually turned me on to this, and it was so simple, but it was so good. This is easily my favorite two-part cocktail or two-part drink out there. Wow, I'm surprised. Well, yeah. actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> so I think everybody out there can guess what one of the ingredients is. Yeah, definitely my my favorite spirit on the planet, and that is chartreuse. Of green course, chartreuse. of course. And, and the other half is a really high quality root beer. Yeah, I know. Simple, but when you put them together, it is amazing together. So it's, it's really basically good. like a Chris Tunstall rum and coke. Yeah. Ah, uh-huh. I'm not giving that one to you. No. Oh no, no you said not, yes. No, it's not even close. <laughs> Those those two things should not even belong in the same brain at the same I, time. I really just wanted to see your reaction <laughs> to that. But yeah, chartreuse, green chartreuse, and a uh, high quality root beer are the spicy kind. Magic together. They're fantastic. They're so good. So that just about covers the two part cocktails that are on the sweeter side of things. But there's quite a few options that are more on the savory or less sweet side as well. Yeah, and one of my favorites during the summer, uh, you know, what's really hot outside is just a simple Campari and soda water. You really can't beat a Campari soda on a hot day. No. Nah, Something it, about that bitterness just cuts right through the heat. Oh, yeah. And the water is lower in proof. The Campari is lower in proof. The water helps to hydrate you. It's just a really great combination. Yeah, definitely. Now, I actually heard a rumor, and I haven't told Chris about this. I heard a rumor that you can take Campari and add a fizzy, hoppy IPA beer, Ooh. and it is supposed to be fantastic. Ooh, we will get back to you and let you know how good that is. And if you've tried it, 
let us know because that sounds absolutely fantastic. Let's be honest. Now that Chris heard me say that, he's going to have it in like roughly the next 10 minutes. No, I wonder. Is it like a shot of Campari and like a beer next to it or is it like Campari No, it a was beer? a cocktail. Okay. Yeah, I know. Right. I'm curious too. We're going to have to give that one a try. Yeah, I think we're uh, going to have to do some investigation, guys. That sounds like science is happening. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So Sherry Laughlin, also known as the intoxicologist, um, also has a list of two-part cocktails. And one of the ones she put on there that really intrigued me was Campari and grapefruit juice. Oh, good job, intoxicologist. I know, there sounds good. There goes my summer. I know, there goes my <laughs> grapefruits. Yeah, she calls it the Camparosa. And I, I just love the idea. I haven't tried it, but I love the idea of Campari and the bitterness of Campari alongside the sweetness and bitterness of grapefruit. Yeah, I can see that being a really great combination definitely and uh yeah uh, we're gonna have to, man What's happening this summer is gonna go by <laughs> <laughs> blink of an eye definitely second to last is one that i'm sure everybody's already thought of and it's truly a classic and it really does border on college cocktails because it's so simple and that is the gin and tonic yeah this one is great two-part drink especially when you get a really good london dry gin and a high quality tonic that's oh, important man yeah absolutely i i know i definitely have a couple of my favorite tonic waters but even just a regular old tonic water you can buy in a two liter bottle is really good still good with yeah gin. i know quite a few college friends who had these in in red cup i'm sticking my neck out here but i do think that we have got to include a gin and tonic on this list because it is such a great classic. Yeah, absolutely. And the final one to kind of wrap everything up here is as classic pretty much as it gets Pretty with much, yeah, I think just about as classic as it gets. And that is the martini. Of course, the martini. And this is traditionally, of course, gin and vermouth. Yeah, modern martini. Typically, a lot of people just want chilled vodka. Yeah, there's there's some anti-gin folks out there. But I think even a, a vodka and vermouth martini is still a fantastic option. Or even a vodka martini. I'm not going to tell you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> right, but there is something amazing about just a good gin with a nice dry mm -hmm. vermouth and, you know, a two to one proportion. Right. Very, very classic. So if I could summarize, looking back over this list of cocktails, I think that if you're dealing with a cocktail that only has two ingredients, you're going to have to lean on one of two things. Either on one side, you're going to have to go for something really sweet, like, I don't know, ginger ale or root beer and or I should say, you're going to need really high quality ingredients because you can't get away with low quality ingredients that you can actually taste. <laughs> so in a two part cocktail, you're really going to need high quality or you're just going to need to cover it all up with sugar. Right. <laughs> but you definitely want to have some good stuff because like we mentioned with the Black Russian, there's not a lot for the ingredients to hide behind. Right. So they're really going to be front and center when you're, when you're drinking a, a exactly. drink like this. Exactly. Especially so. something like a gin and tonic or a martini. You're going to need high quality ingredients because like you said, there's nothing to hide behind. Right. Absolutely. Well, now I'm very thirsty. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yeah, I think we've got some IPA cocktails to make. So there's definitely some Campari happening. Yeah, I think this whole week is going to be dedicated to Campari. <laughs> I think it might be. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, if this episode has not inspired you to go grab a couple bottles and make yourself a drink, then I really don't know what will. So for a list of the cocktails we mentioned today, go ahead and visit the show notes over at mixologytalk.com slash 42. So that's it for this week, everyone. Enjoy your cocktails, and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Cheers. Never miss an episode by subscribing in iTunes or YouTube. And as always, check out the show notes by clicking on the right.